Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins... Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by the station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our presentation is entitled Assignment in Tomorrow. Air Force test pilots, the men who fly tomorrow's aircraft, are both born and made. In a moment, you'll hear a little bit of the latter process. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, the airmen in today's United States Air Force are really going places. They're advancing rapidly in new, specialized careers. They're attending the world's best technical training schools, and they're serving in interesting assignments at home and abroad. And now you too can become a member of this elite organization and proudly wear the Air Force blue. You'll be joining Freedom's best defense team, and you'll have the satisfaction of serving yourself and your country at the same time. So find out how you can qualify as an airman. Visit your nearest United States Air Force recruiting station and talk it over with the friendly people there. You'll be amazed at the hundreds of career opportunities open to you. Air Force Blue is a sign of the finest. It marks you as an important member of America's greatest flying organization, performing vital work, keeping America's planes in the air. As an airman, you are a key man, skilled in one of 400 jobs necessary to keep our Air Force the strongest in the world. So, ensure two futures, your country's and your own, as an airman. See your local Air Force recruiter at your nearest Air Force base or your nearest Air Force recruiting office right away. And now your United States Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Assignment in Tomorrow. Base, California, during the early morning hours, high above the Mojave Desert. A pilot pulls back on the controls of a World War II B-25, putting the light bomber into a steep turn. A motion picture camera located behind him records the aircraft instrument readings while he brings the plane to an accelerated stall. This is not the first time he or other pilots have been It has been a required operation of a select group of pilots for the past 10 years. These pilots are the students attending the United States Air Force's Experimental Flight Test Pilot School. But we're getting ahead of the story. Let's look back a little. This is Air Force 5533, ready to roll. That was Lieutenant Frank Gresham taking off just then, taking off from a dusty little airstrip somewhere in Korea. Frank's a pretty hot pilot. He has a distinguished flying cross and an air medal with four oak leaf clusters. But you think that's hard? You ought to meet Major Steve McCoy. Right now, he's in Germany. No, when I was on that first raid on Ploesi, I came in single-handed, see, on those three Messerschmitt. And after I racked up the first one, I uh, climbed up to 20,000 feet. Well, that was Steve, a real hot pilot. Real good at everything, in fact. And you know what they say. It's all right if a guy talks a little too much. But if he can deliver, too, they're the worst. And then there's Dan. That's Captain Daniel Wagner. He's currently stationed at Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama. Let's see, this seems to be the base hospital. Is it all right? Just wonderful, Captain Wagner. We have a bouncing baby boy, and Mrs. Wagner is fine. You can go in in a minute. Oh, thank heaven she's all right. There they are, scattered over the globe. But in a few weeks, they're going to be very important to each other. 
for they are three of the men who have applied and been accepted for training as test pilots. They are three out of the 15 assigned to the next class. The other 12 are officers just like these. They've had a minimum of 1,500 hours of diversified flying time, and the equivalent of at least two years college training in engineering subjects. Their papers are processed, their orders are cut, and they begin arriving from the far-flung bases of the Air Force. During the first three months of training, the student pilots fly performance evaluations on aircraft such as the T-28, T-33, and B-25. They do this exactly as though these aircraft had never been tested before, recording the data and translating their findings figures, which can then, of course, be checked against the known flight characteristics of each plane. Although each student is an experienced pilot before entering the school, the maneuvers he is learning are seldom encountered in normal flying. But let's look in on a morning. What's on the program for this morning? Well, as soon as we get clearance, head off toward Lancaster till we find some smooth air. Roger. Groundhog, over six. Groundhog, over six. You're clear for takeoff. Over six to Groundhog. Roger. possible personality clash between instructor and student be avoided. Each instructor rates each man in the class, and each day a different instructor flies with a different student. Social activities during the course are limited by the student's own inclination, almost exclusively to the two-hour weekly physical training period, the only portion of the curriculum which can be referred to as a formation. This can be a round of golf in Lancaster, but is generally spent in the swimming pool by the officers' club where the wives may join in and where textbooks are off limits. Everybody got that equation? Yeah. Okay, that does it. Seems like it's Wednesday afternoon, so I'll see you at the pool in 15 minutes. I don't know, Dan. This calculus has about got me beat. My head's so full of figures, I even dream about it. Oh, cut it out. It'll all straighten out. You know, one of these mornings, you're going to wake up, and all of a sudden, everything will be as clear as a bell. Yeah? Sure, that's the way it is. All of a sudden. Isn't it, Steve? I don't know. Of course, it's all very elementary for me. If I didn't have any education like some of these guys, I don't know how it would be. Mm-hmm. You know, with very little effort, I could dislike that guy. Oh, you know how it is. 
The papers have made a lot of fuss over him, and everywhere he goes, people are impressed by meeting the famous Major McCoy. I honestly don't think he knows how he sounds to us. Yeah, yeah. I heard him at the club the other night, sounding off to a couple of nurses about Korea. All right, all right. Take it easy. Yeah, okay. I guess I got carried away. The days and weeks slip by. The performance phase is almost complete. Everything seems to jumble together. How's that one, huh? Perfect the first time. All right, let's do it again. Once more. Listening to the proudly we hail production, Assignment in Tomorrow. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Trim is an arrow and faster than sound. That's how the new high flying jets of today's United States Air Force measure up. They soar through the skies, around the clock, constantly on the alert, protecting America's frontiers. And men, you can help keep them there and build yourself a highly rewarding career. At the same time. How? That simple. By becoming an airman. Today's airmen are attending the world's finest air technical training school. They're learning such fascinating skills as radar, air traffic control, air intelligence, just to name a few. Today's airmen are developing new leadership qualities, gaining new prestige, serving as American ambassadors of goodwill in colorful assignments all over the world. They're stepping out smartly in the trim blue uniform, a uniform that marks them as a member of freedom's greatest defense team. And they're gaining rapid advancement in careers that are second to none. Find out how you can qualify as an airman. Remember, men, when you join the Air Force, you join an organization of technicians and specialists. And as an airman... You're a key man on the Air Force team, a skilled ground technician helping to keep America's planes in the air, expertly trained in any of 400 jobs from radio to photography, mechanics to administration. Serve as a leader in Air Force Blue, as part of America's top military organization. To get all the facts, see your local Air Force recruiter soon. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Assignment in Tomorrow. At the end of the performance phase, the grades are evaluated. 70% is needed for passing. This is the second evaluation. The first takes place at the end of the first six weeks of class. Up to now, there have been no washouts. But the three-month period to come is the most critical one. Hey, Dad. Time for chow. Don't you answer when a guy knocks? What's the matter, fella? I didn't know it was you, Frank. Well, what's the matter? Bad news from home? No, no, it's not that. I'm washed out. What? You can't be. Why? Come on in. How do you know? Who told you? Joe Morelli. 
Called me in this afternoon. Indeed, Dan, I don't know what to say. I know what it means to you, like it does to me. Yeah, yeah, that's just the trouble. Oh, he was swell about it. Said he asked to tell me so he could explain and all that stuff. Well, what did he explain? With your background and everything, I just don't see... Oh, it was the flying, Frank. You know, I'm the first one to admit I'm no Jaeger or Murray. I've got the hours, okay, but you know yourself about 80% of them are in Gooniebird. Yeah, but I still say, what about the rest of the picture? Well, that's what he wanted to explain. About how they try to rate the pilots. You know what they told us back at the beginning. They get guys who are hot pilots with no engineering, and they get engineers who can't fly so well, and once in a while they get a combination. Like McCoy? Yeah. But if they have to choose, they'd rather have a guy who has a real feel for flying and who work hard enough to master the essentials enough so he can understand what the project engineer wants rather than someone like me, who's only just, well, average in the flying world. See, Dan, I... I still don't know what to say. Oh, don't worry about me, Frank. Guess it hit me pretty hard, but I'm coming out of it now. Well, did you find out uh, what your assignment will be? Well, I guess... That's the thing that saved me, sort of. They were pretty swell about that. I'm staying right here at the flight test center. Project engineer. Well, that's really great. That's the best assignment you can have right here. Well, anyway, we won't have to discontinue this side coaching. I can go right on helping you evenings. Oh, you don't have to do that, Dan. You're going to be busy with your new job. I guess you'll be sending for your family, huh? Well, sure, but that won't interfere with an extra hour or so at night for study. You know, Frank... You've got what it takes in the flying end of it. And I'm going to see you get the other, too. If it kills me. Yeah. The course continues. All types of maneuvers are practiced over and over. Steep rate of climb takeoffs, nose-up altitude landings, and minimum distance landings. Sometimes long hours at extremely high altitudes. They're accomplished in several different types of aircraft in order to prepare pilots for testing anything from helicopters and small liaison planes to heavy jet bombers. Added to all this, there's the stiff academic schedule, which includes courses that are as difficult as they sound, as, for example, in properties of the atmosphere, performance aerodynamics, theoretical aerodynamics, slide rule and calculator operations, conventional engine performance, both theoretical and practical. Then there's physics, thermodynamics, calculus, jet engine performance, supersonic aerodynamics, weight and balance, and stability flight test methods. The time seems all too short to the officers in the class. The course is nearing its end, however. How about this computation here, Dan? Now, tomorrow night, you've had it. And you've got the usual six o'clock wheels up in the morning. I guess you're right, but I get carried away when the thing begins to come clear to me. I hate to stop. Well, yeah, but you can't do it all in one night. No. I know. It's swell of you to keep on helping me this way. Didn't your wife mind going to the dance with the Gordons? Mm -mm. That saves us getting a sitter. Listen, seriously, if we get me through this school, I'm going to take the two of you down to Los Angeles. We'll have a whole weekend all on me to celebrate. Well, that suits me. About the celebration, that is. But it's not going to be on you. Well, we'll cross that when we come to it. You know, I, I never asked you how you like your new job. Oh, I like it fine. Next to doing what you're going to be doing in a few weeks, it's the best assignment in the Air Force. And pretty soon we'll be, well, working together again, huh? Uh, you know better than that, Dan. There are only a few vacancies at the test center here, and all 14 of us out to get them. Well, some of them are going to get assigned here. You might as well be one of them. That's what you'd better shoot for. Yeah, they're sure the plus jobs, all right. Mm-hmm. Air Materiel Command's looking for acceptance pilots, I hear, for assignments in aircraft factories. Well, there are plenty of interesting jobs outside the test center, I know that. Air Proving Ground Command's one of them. Operational suitability testing? Mm hmm. And maintenance testing in tactical units where they're introducing new production aircraft. Yeah. I bet McCoy will get a job here at Edwards. Well, don't get all excited when I say this, but you got to admit, he's good. Sure, sure, sure. He can fly a plane, swim like a fish, play the piano like Liberace. For all I know, he can play ping pong and shoot holes in one at will. <laughs> You're prejudiced. Well, you don't have to listen to him every day like I do. You know something? Guys like that usually have an inferiority complex. Inferiority complex? That guy never have. Well, never mind McCoy. Just keep after that job. I'm not quitting for the closing gun. That's the stuff. Well, I'd better buzz along, like you say. I've got to get some shut-eye. Okay. Take it easy, then. See you tomorrow night. 
In addition to classroom study and flying, other features have been included in the list of activities for the test pilot trainees. During the last few weeks of the six-month course, they visit the aircraft industries within the Los Angeles area and confer with their aeronautical and design engineers. They tour the NACA's Ames Aeronautical Laboratory at Moffett Field near San Francisco. They check out in the ejection seat on the specially constructed stand at Williams Air Force Base, Arizona, and in the high-altitude chain. The latter phases are a must on the list. If a pilot fails to withstand either of the checkouts, he is automatically relieved from the school. Their physical endurance during the checkouts is closely observed since they must maintain a high standard of physical fitness for their duty as test pilots. Well, what do you know, Frank? When did you get back from Arizona? Good to see you, boy. I just got in this minute. I thought I'd stop by here before I went to the BOQ. Well, sit down, will you? I'm waiting for Sue. All right. We're dining out tonight. Uh, the Gordons are sitting. Oh, I am bushed. Well, how was the trip? Great, just great. I came through okay, too. I guess. Uh, it's wonderful. When's graduation? Next week. You're going to be able to make it, aren't you? Uh, that is, if I'm included? Well, what do you mean, man, make it? I hear they're calling you their star pupil. Uh -huh. I wouldn't miss it for worlds. Well, you know, I feel like they ought to make the thing up, you know, the diploma or certificate to both of us instead of just me. I couldn't have done it without you. Listen, Frank, the way you work, you'd have made it. I just gave you a kick in the pants from time to time, that's all. Well, I'll never be able to thank you enough. Don't try. Just see that you get that job here. I need a good hot pilot on a job that's coming up. Well, you better talk to McCoy. Oh, speaking of the devil. Hey, Dan Wagner, you still around here? I am. You must like this joint. What are you doing? Oh, I'm assigned to the flight test center. Project engineer. Oh, yeah? Well, that ground stuff is okay for some people, but personally, you can have it. I've got it. Yeah. Well, I'll see you around sometime. I uh, figure to be here, too, for a while. You see what I mean? Oh, come on. Lay off him, Frank. He's okay. Different things affect different people in different ways. You know, he's just whistling in the dark. You'll see. He's as unsure of the job as you are. Sure, sure. Endless examples can be given of the types of aircraft tested by graduates of the school. The rocket-propelled X-1A, the tailless X-4, the adjustable winged X-5, and the delta-winged XF-92A. Other aircraft include the XB-51, the YB-60, XB-52, B-47, F-100, F-86, F-84, and F-102. Many of the graduates of the school within the past few years have become well-known for their contributions to aviation. Major Chuck Yeager, pilot of the Bell X-1A, who is credited with being the first human to exceed the speed of sound. Lieutenant Colonel Frank Everest is chief of the Flight Test Operations Laboratory at Edward. Colonel Fred J. Escani is the holder of the world's closed course speed record. Lieutenant Colonel Russell Schley is the holder of the existing cross-country record. Lieutenant Colonel Richard L. Johnson and Captain J. Slade Nash are the past and present holders of the world's official speed record. And Major Arthur Murray is the holder of the unofficial altitude record. The men who graduate today stand in line to be the future contenders for the mark set by their predecessors. And so it gives me great pleasure to add your names to the roster of graduates. Your assignment orders are in my office, but before you go to pick them up, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you for your achievements, your fine attitude, and your efforts. It's been mighty pleasant having you with us. And now we, uh, well, here we like to say to each of you, your assignment is in tomorrow. Well... I guess that's it. Oh, come on, boy. You're going to pick up those orders before the suspense kills me. Yeah, that's right. Lieutenant Grayson, looking for your orders, sir? Uh, yes, Sergeant. Have you got them? Yes, sir. Just a moment, please. Dan, you see McCoy standing out there at the end of the hall? Mm-hmm. You know what he was doing, don't you? Well, just standing. Mm-mm. He was getting up enough nerve to come in. That's what he was doing. What, like me? Dan, if you weren't along... It would be about 4 o'clock this afternoon before I would have come in. Hey, what's the matter? Don't you think he's human or something? Not exactly, at least not up to now. You know, I, I think you're right about him. I feel like sort of a heel. It's just... He does everything so easy. Yeah, I suppose so. And, well, we've been under terrific pressure the last six months. Okay, Frank, okay. You can get off the hook. Here we are, sir. 
How many copies do you think you'll be needing? Oh, uh, you better make it about 25, I guess. I'll need some for baggage, some for transportation sections, so far. Uh, excuse uh... me, sir, but you'd better read these orders. I don't think you'll be needing quite that many. They don't call for any travel at all. They're just reassigning you right here, sir, to the flight test center. No kidding. Let me see that. Here's a copy, sir. Six ought to be enough. Have them for you in the morning. Lieutenant Frank Gresham. So and so and so and so and so and so. Assigned. Air Force Flight Test Center. Edwards Air Force Base. Dan, did you hear that? I heard. Right here, black and white. Hey, boy, you've got more intestinal fortitude than I have. Oh, I was afraid for a minute to look at him. Edwards? Yeah. That's great. Congratulations. Okay, Sergeant. Uh, give me the bad news. Yes, sir. You are, Major McCoy. Edwards? Yeah. Well, gentlemen, now that celebrations are in order, how about coming over to the house with me? I think Sue would be willing to rustle up something for us. Oh, I'd like that fine. You know, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Surprised? Yeah. I got the idea somehow that you didn't like me much. Well, it was a wrong one. Wasn't it, Frank? Sure was. Come on, let's go. Young men, get into the blue, the Air Force blue, and you'll be getting yourself a skilled career that is second to none. You now have an excellent opportunity to qualify as an airman and serve in colorful assignments at home and abroad. You see, today's Air Force is expanding rapidly, and this means that there are literally hundreds of openings for qualified young men to train in air technical schools and become highly skilled specialists. As an airman, a whole new world of adventure and prestige will be open for you. You'll meet new friends and learn qualities of leadership that will serve to your advantage wherever you go. Yes, now is the time to get into the blue, the Air Force Blue. Get ready, get set, and get know-how. Yes, if you want to be ready for the future, train now as an airman. You'll get the world's finest technical training in any of more than 400 skills, from jet mechanics to atomic weapons. Every airman is a key man skilled in a job on which the Air Force depends. So, if you want to be ready for a truly important future, see your local Air Force recruiter soon. has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>